This is the infamous MV Agusta F3XX, a limited production, track only, 160 horsepower, 343 pound middleweight missile. And we're gonna build one. This is the bike that we're going to start that build with. This is my new, new to me, 2015 MV Agusta F3 800. It is the ABS EAS model. For those of you that are not familiar with the MV acronym, EAS stands for Electronically Assisted Shift. So basically, quick shifting and auto blipping. This bike wears a full Cruciata Superbike race body kit. It has Galfer fully floating wave rotors, Brembo M4 monoblocks filled with Z04 pads, stainless steel brake lines running directly to a Brembo 19 by 18 Mark II brake master cylinder. Suspension, it has Marzaki OE fork tubes with Adriani carts, Olin steering damper, Olin's TTX 36 rear shock, with a linear lower link. Up in the cockpit, it's pretty standard equipment with the exception of the custom engraved Apex switches and this Gal Speed OG wired clutch perch. This thing is absolutely phenomenal. I don't know if you guys have had the opportunity to experience um, this wired clutch perch, but it is buttery, buttery smooth. There's a nice weighted pull with no hiccups or, or you know, gotchas in there or anything like that. Fully adjustable, absolutely phenomenal. It's one of those things that if you've never experienced, you don't know what you're missing, but once you have it, you don't know how you lived without it. It is so good, in fact, that I'm going to be installing one on my BMW S1000 RR track bike over there. But back to this bike, quick release fuel filler cap, RG racing frame sliders, RG racing case covers, quick shifter, as I mentioned, um, Gillis completely adjustable um, billet and carbon fiber rear sets. I don't know if I'm going to hold on to these rear sets. Reason being is that I can't individually adjust height without also adjusting forward and back position of the peg. It does have about four or five rotating stops of the peg so I can rotate this to get some height or lose some. But however, if I like where the peg is, for example, and uh, I just want to move it forward, if I slide it forward, you can see this ramp is angled. If I slide it forward, I'm also going to inadvertently lower the peg, which means I have to try to rotate it up to gain that height again. Similarly, if I like where the peg is and I just want to move it back slightly, I'm going to gain some height. Regardless, um, this is currently at its highest position and it is still over an inch lower than the pegs on my s 1000 rr as a result, I'm experiencing something that I've never experienced while riding on the track, and that's dragging my toe. Um, I drag my toe every corner on both sides of the bike, so much so that I've had to purchase uh, uh, replacement toe sliders for my track day boots. So I may be replacing those rear sets, I don't know. Anyway, continuing on, 520 chain conversion. I'm currently running 17, 41 gear ratios um, stock rear hub and spindle over on the right side sc project cat delete high mount conic exhaust full titanium this bike came with two exhausts i'll put the other one on the screen right now the other one is a i'm calling it a mid mount termi exhaust it's also titanium and it's also a cat delete so that means this bike has stainless steel headers the stock stainless steel headers still installed it also came with a second set of stainless steel headers. Uh, this setup right here, um, both sets, the, the headers on the bike and this spare one here, they're both stock units, so they're stainless steel and fairly heavy, but both have been modified. As you can see, there are some welding, some cut and weld lines here, as I rotate it out. The previous owner cut this out and removed the baffling in here, so it flows really, really good. So. If we replace it, and we're going to replace it with a titanium unit, I don't expect any additional horsepower. Um, I don't expect it to flow any better. It will, however, weigh significantly less because this thing is a tank. But as I said, it's been cut here to remove this baffling. And if I rotate it over, 
You can see here where the flapper valve um, was removed and welded in, the bracket was cut off, and if we look down inside, you could see that there is no flapper valve and no baffling. So free flowing stock header, and the same thing is on the bike as well, except I think the one on the bike has a um, modification to accept a wide band O2 sensor. But let's continue on the wheels. So forged wheel in the rear. This is off an F4 1000 lightweight forged wheel. This is a 17 by six because like, as I said, it's often of an F4. Um, the stock wheel on the F3 is a 17 by five and a half and you normally fit a 180, but this has a 265 Dunlop slick on it. The front is just a cast wheel, nothing special here. You may have noticed that the bike does not have a windscreen on it. That is because um, I had to have the bike wrapped. So based on how things worked out, um, I have a mountain of parts that we're going to be installing on the bike over here. But based on how things worked out with the local vendor that was doing the wrap and so forth and so on, um, I needed to wrap the bike before I started um, recording this video, even before I started collecting any parts. Um, and as a result, obviously, to, to wrap the bike, I had to remove the windscreen. However, it came with this zero gravity double bubble windscreen. I like zero gravity double bubbles for the street, not so much for the track. For the track, I actually prefer the single um, tall, uh, I'm calling it a coarser bubble that I have on the BMW and the Ducati Panigale V4 over there as well. So. Um, there is one in that mountain of parts. We are going to be installing it on this bike. Speaking of the wrap, there's a bit of a story here, but the wrap did not go as planned. I don't know if you can tell. It actually looks really good on video and in photos, but this red in the wrap is more pink than the actual red of the bike, which is more vibrant. So I don't know if you can tell that. And it looks good on video, but there's a lot of problems with the wrap, so much so that I had to get a full refund um, from my local vendor. I like giving local vendors a shot, but this particular one came up very, very short. Um, as you can see here, I'm getting some bunching um, on some of the cut lines. There's some bubbling here, some bubbling here. as well as some significant bubbling and raising here. Same thing on the other side of the belly pan. Then there are just some cut lines that don't make sense. For example, this janky cut line here that goes down to this. And then the idea that they sort of left this red knob just doesn't make any sense. So this is all one piece where this wrap is here is a, a second piece of just black. And you can see he went across here and left this with a design and just sort of left this knob that doesn't make sense to me. It's also starting to bunch and lift. The tail section was so bad that I had to remove the tail, uh, the wrap on the tail section. It was just lifting everywhere. Apparently, um, the individual that wrapped this bike, he did not degrease or de-wax the bike ahead of time with an acetone. He just assumed it was fine and he immediately started wrapping and the thing started lifting and uh, we had all of these problems. He also damaged the bike and the wrap. You, know, you can see here, there's some damage on the wrap. He actually dropped the bike on the right side and it caused some damage um, to the titanium exhaust here. And I had a Rizoma brake lever guard on here. Um, I have one on order. He actually broke that as well. He wasn't very forthcoming initially with the damage of this, um, of the bike and of the wrap and what he had done. And um, he later came clean, but um, not very happy. Don't trust him, got my money back. But that's why, in making a short story long, why the bike currently does not have a windscreen on it. I don't think this wrap is going to last the summer here in Arizona. It's late April, it's just starting to get hot. I figure I probably have another two, two and a half weeks to work in the garage and finish this bike before it's oppressively hot and I, I cannot work. But as I mentioned, I'm already having issues with the wrap. Actually, you can see a janky cut line right in there that simply does not make any sense. This garage will get to about 130 on really hot days. I don't think the wrap was going to last. So I fully anticipate 
to have to pull this off in six to 12 months and either have the bike professionally wrapped by someone who's wrapped motorcycles before, or I'll paint it a solid color and then get a decal kit that I can install myself, probably a custom decal kit that I can install myself. Having said all that, we need to start tearing this bike apart so that we can start installing all of the goodies on it. We have to take off all of the fairings, we gotta get rid of both wheels, we have to take off the brakes and so forth. So if you've never seen a stripped F3800 before, stay tuned.
Okay, so I think we're done with the stripping down process. I just need to um, bleed the brake fluid out of the brake callus before, before I actually take them off. There's nothing spectacular to do there. I'll just grab a, um, I have an uh, air compressor over there and a vacuum pump. I'll just uh, open the bleed valve, suck it all out. And then I just literally need to just to take the calipers off um, and remove the brake master cylinder. So um, yeah, I think we can wrap this up. All right, guys, well, there you have it, a stripped down MVF3800. In episode number two, we will remove the rear subframe and the front upper fairing stay. We will install our lightweight race aluminum units from modal holders. Um, and we'll see what else we get to. Maybe we'll crack open the air box and start to do some stuff there. But I think that is it for episode one. We're pretty successful and in a decent amount of time too. So my name is Derek. This is Euro Superbike Life, ESBK Life for short. You know the drill. Like, comment, subscribe, or smash it if you didn't. Until next time, guys, take care.